Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. We are putting in a low producing well reservoir tank in a basement. Uh, the well here only produces 20 gallons at a time before it cuts off. Perfect candidate for pumping in, pumping the well into the reservoir tank and then having it fill up the tank and then drawing from the reservoir instead of drawing directly from the well. So we're gonna go over the steps on how to install this system. So the first thing that we're going to point out is that this is a very narrow profile tank. This is Norwesco's freestanding uh, tank, which of course we carry and we have great prices on. This is designed to fit through doorways uh, so that you can get it into a basement space with relative ease. So once you place your tank, you're going to want to look for where the well water line is coming into the house. In this case, it, it was perfect. It was placed right next to our, our reservoir tank. This is the incoming water line coming from the well. Um, and of course before it was just coming straight up, running along these joists over to the pressure tank. What we did was after cutting off the power to the well pump and draining out all the water pressure in the system, we cut out a section of this piping and interrupted it. So. The, the, the water supply coming from the well is now going over, up, and into the top of the tank to feed water into the tank. Then uh, we have a pump inside the reservoir. It's our Springer Series traditional pump. That pump is, is now inside the tank. The plumbing is coming up, up here, and now that is going to where the old well pump was supplied. So, so we're using that existing pressure tank, but now instead of using it for the well pump, we're using it for this intake reservoir pump, the Springer Series traditional. So that's gonna continue on and supply water to the house. On the electric side of things, there was wire that was run up with this water line, again, going to the joist, uh, right underneath the joist to that pressure switch on the pressure tank. What we did was we, got, we interrupted the wire right about here and cut it and then ran it back this way. So now instead of that wire that was going to the pressure switch, now we're, we're running that wire directly into our little fuse pump saver. This is a device that's gonna detect if there's water in the well. Uh, we have other videos linked in the description below on how to wire this pump saver and a little bit more about how the pump saver works. But briefly, it detects the, the load on the pump and in cases where there's water in the pump, that pump is gonna draw more amperage. Uh, when it starts sucking air, that load on the pump is gonna drop and this pump saver is gonna detect that and shut the pump down completely. So we're not running the wire for the well pump into a pressure switch anymore. We're just running it into this little fuse pump saver. Coming out of the little fuse pump saver, or technically into it, is the, uh, a direct home run to your electrical panel. This is a dedicated circuit that was run by an electrician from the breaker panel directly to this little fuse pump saver to supply power to the pump now. Now we have wire still run to that pressure switch we have a 230 volt pump in the well. We put a 230 volt pump in this reservoir tank and now that, that Springer Series traditional pump, we ran the wiring up here into a junction box and then we ran this wire to that pressure switch. So now that pressure switch and that pressure tank are run, the power supply is run to this pump, this water line is run to the pressure tank so that pressure tank and that pressure switch are just gonna operate the pump that's inside here, the Springer Series traditional pump. You'll notice that in addition to the new power supply coming in and the load side going out to the well pump, 
we also have two other cables here. One of these cables, this one right here, is controlling a normally closed float switch inside this reservoir tank. A normally closed float switch will shut the power to the pump off, the power to the well pump off when this tank fills. So we'll take a look in here. That right there is our cable weight, the black thing, and the gray thing is the float switch. So that cable weight is keeping that float switch stationary and the gray float switch is just, uh, just allowing, it is, is getting a read on the water level. So when the water level goes up, that float switch will go in the upward position, which will shut the power to the well pump off. And again, that ties in here. It just interrupts one of the hot legs of the, uh, of the, of the well pump. It's coming in here. It's interrupting one of the hot legs. Um, I have more detail on how to wire this in a different video. I'm not gonna go through the wiring in here because it is rather complicated because in this system, we also added a second shutoff device which is this well stop located in a bucket. And what this does is because there's no floor drain around this reservoir tank, we wanna make sure that this tank doesn't overflow and flood the basement. So what we did instead of, instead of running this pipe into a floor drain, which, which there is none, so we couldn't, we ran an overflow pipe out of the top of this tank directly into a five gallon bucket. So if that normally closed float switch fails inside the tank for some reason, or it gets hung up on something, this is our safeguard. So if, if water level gets too high, it'll go out this overflow, it'll fill this bucket, and it will, those two metal probes, the, the water will create a circuit between those two metal probes, which will then shut the power to the well pump off completely so that the well pump doesn't keep filling this overflowing tank. Now looking at the pump inside the reservoir tank, again this is our Springer Series traditional. You'll notice that black floating thing right there, that is the float switch that operates this pump. That is a normally open float switch so that if the pump level, if the tank level gets too low, that float switch turns down and cuts the pump off in the reservoir tank. So that's saving the uh, saving the, that pump and preventing it from running dry in, inside the tank. So the final thing of this system is troubleshooting it to make sure that it's operating properly. First thing that you'll likely notice is that the reservoir may not be filling as quickly as you would like. Um, that's likely because the pump saver is shutting the pump down if it detects it air being drawn into the well pump. If it seems like the, the well pump is not pumping or not filling the reservoir tank as quickly as it should, you know, just maybe want to note the, um, the interval that this pump saver is set to. This little set screw right here should be turned to one of these numbers. In this case, it's turned to 100 to point to 160, which means that every 160 minutes, this pump saver is gonna allow the pump to recycle, try again to see if water is present. You, you can shrink that cycle a little more. You can run it every 50 minutes. You can run it every two minutes. We generally recommend keeping it around 160 minutes. That's kind of a sweet spot. You don't wanna keep running that pump often um, and running the risk of it continually uh, running dry. Um, so 160 is kind of a sweet spot. If this seems to be working at the proper interval, um, but it doesn't seem like it's filling the tank, just do a visual inspection of that normally closed float switch that's hanging from the cable weight. Um, just maybe rattle it a little bit to make sure that, that there's, a, there's a ball that, 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 uh, that rolls to create a circuit or, or open a circuit. It, sometimes that ball just gets stuck a little bit. You may just need to shake that normally closed float switch. The third thing to check is if you do use this well stop device, check to make sure there's no uh, moisture inside this bucket that would um, create a circuit here and shut that, that power supply to the pump off. You may try to reset that um, 
if this uh, red light is lit up. On the um, household supply side, uh, if you're not getting water inside your house, that would be an issue with the Springer Series traditional pump that's inside the tank. So you'll want to uh, do a visual inspection inside the reservoir to make sure that that float switch is, is, is pointing up upright. And again, because the float switch relies on a ball that rolls between uh, to create a circuit or open a circuit, you may want to just try to jostle that float switch with a piece of pipe or uh, some, some, something long enough that it can reach it. Just jostle it a little bit, make sure it's pointing upward, and then make sure you have power supply going to the pressure switch on your pressure tank. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video has been helpful. And as always, we have all these supplies on our website, www.rainbrothers.com. We sell all the components in a, in a low producing well reservoir kit. We sell it as a package system on our website. Link is in the description below. Uh, we love the opportunity to coach you on a tank. Usually we can get you better pricing than what's listed on our website. Um, so we'd love to uh, get the opportunity to quote that for you. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it.